Sound advice to keep your body and mind in perfect harmony. You're tuned in to the Dr. Stephen Show. Now, here is Dr. Steven Eisenberg. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Dr. Stephen Show. We are blessed today to have an amazing guest. I, uh, I love, love this guy and his company, Pretty much everything he touches just turns to gold. I mean, it's just amazing. I, his name is Lee Ram Siegel, and he's the CEO of Click Inc. and Click Health, the world's largest independent health agency, which he co-founded in 1997. Good year. Good year. And he's known for uh, so much, but he's unconventional in his approach to business. He launched his first company at age 12. 12! What was I doing at age 12? I was like a... Praying for my bar mitzvah. I mean, he had a company. He became the CTO of a publicly traded company by the time he was 16. Co-wrote the New York Times bestseller, The Decoded Company, back in 2014. He was named one of the 100 most inspiring people in health for the last four years. He's an EY Media and Technology Entrepreneur of the Year, a Globe and Mail Top 40 Under 40, and not only that, inducted into the Profit Magazine's Hall of Fame as the youngest CEO ever to lead a Profit 100 company. He's talked about, you know, he's talked everywhere. TEDx, Global, Harvard, Wharton, Google, Twitter. Uh, a little shout out to Ryan if you're watching. Anyway, I, I'm, we are blessed to have him here. And I wanted to welcome you to the show. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having for me. me. And uh, there's been so much buzz around Click and Click Health in the media. I just... For everybody out there, for everybody out there, what you know, tell us about Click and what and what you guys do. Well, thir first of all, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I, I think the the buzz has just been amplified by uh, the fact that we're 19 years into this. We're still consistently lucky, uh, but what we are is really a group of 600 incredibly passionate and optimistic uh, people that are really trying to shape the future of healthcare and are really, really uh, encouraged by the role that technology can play in doing that. We help uh, our clients to commercialize, whether they're a medical device company, a biotech, a pharma company. Uh, we really come and help them with clinical recruitment, with market sizing and shaping. Uh, as you know, the managed market space and reimbursement for patients is such an issue here in the U.S. So helping them do that, helping them uh, hire the right field force, train that field force, uh, enable that field force. And then we orchestrate a range of uh, marketing work streams, but with everything that we touch, we try to do it a little bit differently uh, and really using more modern approaches so that we can help our clients market effectively in a digital age. And you're the, you're, uh, Click Health is the largest in the world independent health agency. Yeah. You, don't just, you don't just go there overnight. I mean, what makes you guys different? What, uh, I, I've seen it firsthand, I mean, from all your events, but what makes your work different? Well, I think, you know, people forget that companies are just a collection of people. And uh, I can't really speak to our competition. We don't spend a lot of time thinking about our competition, but we do spend a lot of time thinking about our competitiveness. Uh, and as an organization, I think that uh, one of the things that we do differently is really try to make every touch point more, more intimate. Uh, and, and we try to dial up the empathy in, in, in the most creative ways that we can. We try to educate in more immersive ways, and you're going to see some of those examples today. Uh, but we do try to think about every opportunity to really think about what's possible now by applying technologies that are already in use and have use cases in other industries, and then bridging them with the problem statements that we're seeing in healthcare. Uh, because it's when we connect those dots at, at that convergence, uh, amazing opportunities emerge uh, one thing that I've, I've I've noticed about you guys is that it's like high touch and high tech in this perfect marriage and it, 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 it does that does that resonate over there uh, it, it, it does and if you really think about uh, uh, I'll, I'll use medical device as an example yeah. because there, there is so much happening. And, and a theme with, with what we're doing with customers today uh, is really thinking about how 
we can not just replace the interfaces that are clunky and all the knobs that, that an individual might have on their ears or their body, uh, and actually move that into a touch point that's highly personalized and intimate. That technology already exists with Bluetooth, but what's amazing uh, is what we're able to do with machine learning to almost create Nest Lite applications that understand our own body, personalized to us. Uh, and in doing so, uh, we make uh, compliance easier, but we also uh, make every individual feel more understood. One of the deepest rooted human emotions is that feeling of being understood. Uh, and when our digital touch points understand us and personalize to us, uh, people tend to enjoy the experience more. So uh, what I'm hearing is you guys give this, uh, this almost this beautiful voice to the companies that you work with, this, this, you, the, the, whether it's pharma, biotech, or medical device, you give them this voice that gets out into the world, and it's it's this beautiful song. It's like this this it's the song of, of of creativity. Creativity is is at the heart of everything that we do, and and so is empathy. Uh, if you think about the problem statements that our customers have today, uh, they're actually no different than they were a decade ago, uh, but new things are possible. So for example, uh, we've got a customer that's uh, working in the Parkinson's space, and this is a tremor medication. Uh, this is not a new issue, but not all physicians recognize uh, just how painful it is to go through the day and experience these tremors. And for a long time, uh, companies have been trying to uh, use the science and try to create a compelling argument with the science, but without empathy for the pain that the physician is going to go through uh, when they try to get that product reimbursed. So instead, uh, one of the things that our team has done is we've actually worked with a few of the leading hospitals uh, to uh, recreate, the, from a decision sciences point of view, the exact sensation uh, that a patient would feel while coping with Parkinson's. And then using haptic technology that has been developed for other industries uh, and a whole bunch of our capabilities fused into that, what we're able to do is start a call by asking a physician to put on the glove, uh, and after five or six minutes, all we need to do is ask them, do you feel like this is a great way to go through the day? Uh, and by making that individual experience what it's like to walk in that patient's shoes, uh, you're able to help them better understand uh, more so than you would with any slide or any uh, traditional creative. That is, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. It's really, really getting into the other shoes. And that's really what empathy is about, listening and experiencing from the heart. And, and uh, nobody knows that better than you. <laughs> uh, but we can't have every physician uh, writing <laughs> songs and, and necessarily being as, as progressive in tweeting and emailing with their customers. But what can we do uh, to really immerse them in that experience of their patient? I and love it. even when we're educating them and communicating with them, how can the creative application of data and technology be combined uh, with the problem statements that we're trying to solve uh, in order to think about these same problems uh, differently? Yeah, now I um, first met you at the first Muse event. Now this is a salon, the modern day salon that is just incredible and um, you're bringing back this mold, th th this gathering of intellectuals, musicians, creatives. Tell me how it all came to be. The Muse, click Muse. Sure. So uh, Muse it really started off as an experiment, and the question that we asked was, uh, why? Why is it that all of these? Uh, healthcare events that we go to so dry and are they actually achieving their goal and what we thought was what if we did a throwback uh, to the days of the age of enlightenment but instead of philosophers and poets and painters uh, we would have an equally inspiring setting with no commercial agenda and do it in a fun uh, gathering where the people that were invited were all independently doing something remarkable so if you put out your hand and introduced yourself to somebody you could be sure that you're going to learn about some remarkable thing and you know your talk at uh, the Boston Muse was uh, still one of uh, uh, the most loved and talked about uh, conversations that we've ever had on the Muse stage uh, but it's finding individuals that are doing things differently like yourself uh, and then bringing them together uh, and wrapping that with an experience that has um, 
uh, projection mapping, uh, VR, whatever technologies we think are, uh, are relevant to pushing our industry forward, uh, combined with a little bit of inspiration from music and magic and, uh, and uh, other surprises. And, and um, I, I understand that you just announced the latest muse coming up this March 31st uh, in New York City. And we really hope that you're going to join us. Uh, <laughs> but that's right. In, uh, on uh, March 31st in New York City, uh, we've got an incredible uh, lineup of speakers. Uh, we have people like John Brownstein, who you might have met. Uh, for those of you that are less familiar with uh, John and his work, uh, John has been really at the forefront of healthcare for a long time, uh, inventing uh, things like the Google Flu Trends, uh, responsible for the uh, most recent uh, Uber Health Vaccines Tour. They built things like MedWatch uh, with his team at Harvard. He's also the Chief Innovation Officer at Bo Boston Children's Hospital. So really uh, somebody that gets how this on-demand economy can be pulled into the healthcare landscape. Uh, we've got people like Mark Edwards, uh, uh, who uh, was the first to really recognize the Flint issue and the water issue, and uh, he's going to talk about the work that his team did at Virginia Tech. We've got the voice of Siri. Uh, <laughs> uh, most people don't think about the voice of Siri. Uh, we've got uh, incredible individuals like uh, uh, Louis uh, Schwartzberg talking about gratitude. I, I don't know if you saw his... Uh, uh, TED yeah. Talk, but he's been doing One so much in healthcare now with the idea that if we can pull nature into uh, the clinic, uh, we can get better outcomes. And so we've got an incredible lineup of surprises, uh, musical performances, magic, uh, and most importantly, it's, it's a, an incredible gathering of like-minded people uh, that really care about how to push uh, our industry forward. I have never, I mean, I've never been to an event uh, ever like it, and I and and I highly encourage every viewer out there to get yourselves to a Muse event. And let's take a look at Click Health Muse. Thank you. Click.com forward slash muse and apply uh, everybody out there. And what an amazing, that brings back so much, good, so many great memories. And um, uh, I also wanted to touch upon the event called Click Ideas Exchange, um, where President Clinton spoke in my hometown of Philadelphia. Um, tell me how that came to be. Because the first there was the muse, and then Idea Exchange was this huge, huge event with Clinton and Daniel Kraft and Eric Topol. I know you're watching Dr. Topol. Yeah, a, and uh, very, very similarly thinking about a different problem statement, which is how do we help executives immerse themselves and understand the disruption that's happening around them? Uh, so people like Clinton really talked about not just the healthcare landscape, but the communication challenge uh, of uh, healthcare w and, and specifically the cost side of it. Uh, Eric Topol inspired everybody, as he always does, uh, with explaining how the patient experience is transforming. Uh, Dan Kraft did the same thing with... Uh, uh, some of the work that they're doing at Exponential Medicine. Uh, but we also layered in uh, the regulatory landscape. So we heard from uh, Peggy Hamburg, then the executive director of the FDA. Janet Woodcock talked with uh, uh, Jim Greenwood about how 21st Century Cures is trying to lead the regulators into this space through telepresence. We had Francis Collins, we had uh, Fred Upton talking about the landscape, but then so what? So all of these changes are happening. Uh, then we sort of flip 
flipped uh, uh, the format a little bit, and what we had was management thinkers like Gary Hamill and Tom Peters talking about if you accept that these changes are happening, this is how your organization needs to start evolving uh, in order to be ready uh, uh, for these changes. And then we had panels of executives uh, from all of the leading biotechs uh, really speaking about how technologies like CRISPR, 3D printing of pills, all, you know, all, all of the stuff that's happening in STEM, uh, are really intersecting with things like precision medicine initiatives. We had an incredible panel of patients uh, talking about their expectations and how they've built these communities of millions of people uh, based on uh, the trust and, and empathy that they have for the patients. Uh, and, and we had a, a broad range of technology examples from projection mapping to holograms uh, to 3D printing of prosthetics. But what was amazing about the entire day is at no point did we talk about the future uh, and most people miss that until the end of the day when we mention every single thing that they saw is already in the market so the future is now and uh, we were really really uh, grateful to have Google and uh, biotech industry org and Viva as sponsors because it really allowed us uh, to do something slightly bigger for these 200 CEOs yeah I mean yeah. that is the takeaway of the first half of our show. The future is happening now in healthcare, and it really, Click is at the forefront. I mean, uh, uh, I had the pleasure of speaking at a Muse event and um, Exponential Medicine, uh, and it's just, you guys are just killing it out there. It's just amazing what you're doing. I want to know a little bit more about Click Labs, and when we come back, we are going to get into some virtual reality applications in healthcare. Everyone out there is going to see it for themselves, what I am actually viewing. So when we come back, let's get, let's, 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 let's uh, have Jan come out, yeah. Jan Fossa, and let's do some virtual reality in healthcare. And um, I'm so thrilled that you're here. As am I. Thank you so much for having us. We will us. be right back with some virtual reality in healthcare. Thank you for watching The Dr. Stevens Show. Come on right back, and let's go inside the intestines. Bye. We'll see you in a few minutes. Because you need to know. Because you need to learn. Because financial planning can be complicated. There's WealthEd.com. WealthEd.com. The site dedicated to educating you about financial planning. With guidance from experienced financial planners. Helping you learn more about creating your financial plan. Watch Bucket Strategy Investing, presented by Lucia Capital Group, every day at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Or watch archived features from the show on demand. Learn more about options for your benefits on the Social Security Show every Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Find yourself a girl and settle down. Lucia Capital Group brings you Bucket Strategy Live, Wednesday evenings at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. And learn more about the challenges women deal with on Fem Finance, Thursday afternoons at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's the site where understanding financial planning can start to click. Click on WealthEd.com. Live programs, on-demand archived features and articles. Go to WealthEd.com. WealthEd.com. It's the site where understanding investing starts to click. Click on WealthEd.com. Educating you about financial planning and answering your most important questions with live interactive shows hosted by experienced financial strategists and an on-demand library of videos and articles you can access anytime for free. WealthEd.com brings you retirement planning guidance, social security strategies, tax management techniques, portfolio allocation options, and more. Your source for information and financial education. Online, on demand, on WealthEd.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Dr. Steven Show. We are with Lee Ram Siegel from Click Health, and we're thrilled. We are thrilled that he's brought along Jan Fossa Thank from you. Click Labs. And we are, you know, like we do on the show, we try everything. We are, we are not shy here. So I really want to get into it with you guys and tell me what Click Labs is up to with all this amazing virtual reality in healthcare. Okay, so, um, well, thank you, first of all, to have me. So, Click Labs is all about uh, exploring technology and trying to transfer technologies that already, already exist into applications that we know our customers have. So, medical application, whether it's engagement, learning, simulation, anything like that. 
Um, and VR is the one I'm going to showcase to you right now because VR is a fantastic way to drive people into the experience and to have them immersed so much that you lose the ability to have a, uh, an outside conversation. I've seen this many times where I'm piloting a VR with someone and I try to talk to them and they stop talking to me. It's sort of like when you converse with someone who's typing an email. Yeah. There's those, you know, there's those gaps in conversation. Yes. So, so and, yes. and the reason why we've explored VR after experimenting with a variety of technology from gamification to 3D animation to projection mapping and so on, VR right now is the, the leading technology to capture attention because time is not even the currency anymore. Nobody has time anymore. <laughs> now it's <laughs> all about true. attention. If we can get attention, then we've, we are able to educate or engage or communicate whatever message we want to communicate. Well, this is, that's a great point because when you have yeah. this on, your this is your attention. There is no other. You can't there's no away. other way unless you start putting ads through this. But uh, but I mean <laughs> that's another topic for yes. another time. Exactly. So this so, is Oculus Rift. So this is Oculus Rift, uh, which is the the sort of leading technology for VR. There's many more ways to do VR, and I brought a few here to show you okay. as well. So I'm going to put this on, and so then everybody out there, you're going to see exactly what I am seeing and swimming around the intestines. So I'm just going to put this on. Forget the Jufro. Um, oh my Lord, have mercy! Yes. Whoa! Are you guys seeing this? Are you guys? I am in this. I am inside the intestine. I'm looking at capillaries. Well, there's the wall of the intestine. I mean, this is just. I've never seen anything like this. I have never. I'm swimming around. This looks like a pretty good. Now I'm going in, I'm inside a capillary. Holy moly, I am inside a capillary. Now look, I'm a hematologist by training, okay? These are blood cells that I deal with every day. There's a T lymphocyte, but now I can actually like, wait, there, way to go. Yeah. Oh wait, there it is. I mean, this is unbelievable. I'm seeing everything that I deal with on a daily basis, and it's all around me. There's nowhere I'm looking where, wait, where's that? Oh, that Oh, there, there's another uh, macrophage. Okay, wait. So, this is unbelievable. And Click Labs, Click, Click Labs actually uh, uh, built this. Yeah, we created this. This is a, uh, a short section from a full mechanism of action animation that explains how medication work. So there's applications from um, educating, medical education, which is mechanism of action, mechanism of disease, surgi uh, virtual surgeries, for example. There's also patient application where you can either educate patient on treatment, you can simulate specific disease, you can assist uh, on the therapeutic side. You can create therapeutic application where you might help somebody, for example, deal with reality, sometimes, you know when you're going to the dentist and you watch TV to forget that they're poking yes, your teeth? Yes, yes, yes. Watching TV is semi-engaging. This is fully engaging. You'll forget what's happening to you because you're now so immersed into that virtual world. I was, I was in my own intestine. There was, there, the, that was my world. There was like, I was completely immersed. I mean, this is just incredible technology. What about using it for empathy training or, or talking to, giving patients news of some, you know, is that, you, we talked about digital empathy. I mean, how do we... The, you know, the, the opportunities uh, for empathy and, emerging, and, uh, uh, and immersion are just countless. Uh, you noticed that the first thing you did was actually uh, put your hands out. Uh, well, one of uh, the things that we've actually built as part of this, but we're gonna, and we're going to be showing it actually at Muse in New York, uh, is we've been able to connect uh, 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 Leap Motion so that we can actually allow people to in, interact with that. And, and so they're not just traveling through a blood vessel or an intestine, but they're actually able to manipulate their uh, environment. And, you know, these are ju these are just the early innings of what these technologies can do. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the things that Yan and his team have done is is, uh, is simply c grab the attention by gamifying experiences at uh, at conferences, whether through traditional games, whether it's through a live setting where you're playing golf, but in order to proceed to the next uh, uh, hole, you have to pass a test. Uh, and uh, with each one of these things, what we're doing is we're learning, we're seeing how people are using it, and then we're finding new applications just as, uh, just as you did. Uh, yeah, I mean, can you the, the whole vernacular from the video game industry is in fact being used for medical application. How we went from, in Hollywood especially, we went from videos 
all the way to video games now where you can choose your story. You don't have to watch the movie as the cameraman said it. Yes. You can literally do your own story. We are doing this now medically. As opposed to watching a three-minute video that explains how a drug works, you can experience it. You can be the drug. You can experience what's happening and change the, the path of the story, That's which amazing. from an education standpoint really increases the how much you retain. You know what my favorite books were as a young kid? Choose your own adventure. adventure. Exactly. It's it's choose your own adventure on steroids. Exactly. It's just like it's it's the best thing I've ever uh, I could ever imagen yeah. happening to medical care. You're you are becoming immersed, and you could train doctors using all this technology. Now now this one. So this is the. Uh, what's the difference here? So the beauty of VR is the portability. This is created for Oculus Rift. So you need a um, a beefy computer. Yeah. You need some equipment. You can also running run it from a cell phone. So That's this, the phone right on the back just of a, it. This is a phone. And try Are you it. Seeing this? It's this is a phone right on the back. Sa this is a Samsung phone. Yeah, it's just a Galaxy. And, and, and now it's just a Galaxy. Now I'm... So, so when you put it on, it would Whoa! Stop. And you have the same story. It's now the on same... The oh my lord, yeah. Inflamed yeah. area. Exactly. You know, I had colitis myself. Yeah. I'm like seeing what I had. <laughs> For God's sakes! <laughs> I healed it too. Yeah. I healed my I healed the uh, the, the thing using uh, some of JJ Virgin's uh, pointers. Yeah. But what I'm seeing is is an incredible, incredible intestinal crypts and and blood vessels and and this is just this is fabulous and this is not as as uh, you don't need as you all no. you need is your phone. You, this is a ninety nine dollar. Um, basically add-on for your phone so you just clip your phone in it but there's even more options for people at home is you can use the Google Cardboard or there's new there's new little gadgets like this here I can start the same experience once again you clip that little piece which reminds us of, of, of the opera glasses yes. and now you can yes, try uh, uh, yes dear you I, I, I believe <laughs> I will um, uh, go to the opera yes. oh, I am in there again yeah. And this you guys have to see this. You guys have to get this technology. Where, where can can people can um, contact Click Labs and and uh, reach out to you guys for these demonstrations? I would say they should. Yeah. yeah. Well, it w they can also visit us at at uh, uh, experiences like Muse, where we're showcasing uh, all of these uh, technologies. Uh, but what we're trying to do is understand how. Uh, technologies like VR, AI, robotics, sensors, there, there's so much happening in healthcare right now. We're in the early innings of the digitization uh, that people like Eric Topol have been talking about f for years since the creative destruction of medicine. Yes. Uh, but what's happening now is that that promise of serialized human telemetry and being digitized and always on and always being able to use these types of tools, they're now intersecting with reality and, and what's possible today. And uh, that's really our goal with every one of these experiences is to give people a chance to see uh, some of the incredible things that are happening and uh, really understand the applications uh, for their specific uh, therapeutic areas and the lab has been doing a lot of that with the digital accelerators of our clients helping them really map out a roadmap uh, for how to uh, lean into some of these new capabilities. Okay. Now I do want to put you on the spot because uh, we are opportunistic uh, <laughs> and we would like you to be speaking at our next Muse event so I want to make sure that, uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, we get a commitment. Yes, of course, of awesome. course. I am, I am one thousand percent in. Now, what can you give me an example of of a disease state that a doctor like me um, could be uh, dealing with this technology? Like, what diseases are are uh, we dealing with? Is there one that jumps out that that everyone out there can relate to? Yes, well, there was the the Parkinson example that Lee Rom gave. So we, we sort one. of converted tremor into data. Uh, ultimately, there's muscle, there's myogram data. And if you capture data, and if you process it in a computer, you can replicate it. So every disease can be seen as a function, ultimately. Uh, there's also the visual aspect. If we think of psoriasis, for example, which is a very visual yeah. aspect, yeah. with things like projection mapping and augmented reality, I can simulate psoriasis for a few minutes, just so that you realize what it's like to have it. It would be either projected on you, or you would see your screen with psoriasis. Remember that movie, The Doctor, where the doctor, the cancer doctor, got cancer, mm -hmm. and then he became all about compassion and empathy? Mm -hmm. 
that's that's what it, that that's just the connected to my heart when you said yeah. that because you're it's augmenting their reality yeah. so they can get into the shoes of the patient but i also wanted to say you guys are bringing a brilliant um you're giving pharma this voice. You know, pharma, doctors sometimes perceive pharma as big bad, the big bad wolf, right? Well, I think pharma needs a voice, uh, a caring voice, because many people in pharma that I meet mm. are beautiful people who actually want to help patients and are not just about, you know, the bottom line. Mm. And which, you know, there's a lot of stories going on right now about that aspect. But you guys are bringing, like, the heart of helping. Ph giving pharma a chance to have a, a heart. We're living at an amazing time, and and that heart is resulting in cures uh, that we you know, that that are happening for the first time in a lot of disease states. Every industry has bad actors. Uh, our job is to find those progressive thinkers that are trying to make a difference, and then help them by augmenting the science and the incredible journey that they've been on. I mean. Developing a marketed medicine is one of the hardest human endeavors. One in 5,000, I mean, when you sort of think about uh, the, the expression of today, which is moonshots, yeah. that moonshot was an engineering problem. Uh, once you start to get into the body, the, the, the problems get so much more complex. So once you do get to that point and you've developed uh, a medicine, our job is to make sure that patients are aware of it and so that they, uh, they can advocate for the right treatment option for themselves and that our clients do the best that they can to achieve some of the things that we talked about today, whether that's uh, immersion through uh, attention grabbing uh, uh, technologies like this or augmented reality, whether that's empathy, um, uh, whether that's just making the touch points more intimate and in some cases even extending uh, the capabilities or the effectiveness or the compliance of a, of a treatment uh, through a really intimate digital touch point. Yeah, you know, they, yeah. it brings up a, an amazing point that there's been an argument in medicine for as long as I can remember, can empathy be taught? And I've always, I've always argued that, that, it, that it could be in the right circumstances. I think you guys are creating yeah. the milieu to be able to teach empathy, it, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it's really um, um, getting into the other's shoes and, and yeah. taking that on. What do you think about that? I was thinking of that and also reacting to a comment you say connecting to my heart, which is interesting because we are experimenting with biofeedback in VR. There's abilities, for example, to change the experience based on how you feel. One thing we're trying right now is a holographic version of VR connected to your heart. So the audience, the, the person playing it, would be wearing a heart monitor and then would be traveling into a giant 3D heart like you experience in the intestine. That heart would be their heart beating at the rhythm of their heart. So you could start controlling your, your <laughs> heart rate by not just looking at the little blip on screen, but by being inside the heart and seeing beats. That's so biofeedback gone so mad. So I mean, we that's can just amazing. You're in feedback. the heart. You're in the valves. I could see my floppy valve. You hear yes. that, Topol? Yes. <laughs> Dr. Topol, I'm sorry, yeah. but you yeah. know, I can see my floppy valve in real time, yeah. and and <laughs> maybe when they fix it, you know, I can see watch that too. See. So it's it's that empathy both for the for the patient when you're not a patient, and then so also for your own self. Increasing the awareness of your disease via technology will allow you know sometimes to understand more or to correct some things. There's a lot of psychiatric disorders, yes. um, the whole range, that could be addressed at some level with, with VR environment. This is a lot going on in the field of neurofeedback, yes. where you, you are taking an EEG of someone's brain and then you are uh, steering a spaceship through the asteroids using the brain waves and getting into sort of a meditative state, calming down the stress. I mean, mm -hmm. the, I think the applications are, are, are innumerable for neurofeedback and and this neurology issues. Absolutely, and there's also the, uh, because data, bodies radiate a lot of data, now that sensors are becoming so prevalent, we can collect a lot of data source and start looking at them together. We are participating, for example, in a study where you look at blood pressure 
and electroencephalogram data just to see what the relationship is. Because if there is a relationship, then you could affect people's mental state and therefore fix or correct their blood pressure without any medication. So there's a lot of multiple points of data that are starting to be looked at together, either by people or by AIs, you know, things like Watson, oh, yeah, to, start to, find, Watson. Yeah, to start to find correlation that we didn't really know. We may not even understand them, but if they're here, we can act on them. So right. it's, it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing time to, to be in this space, I would say. Yeah, the, yeah. the title of uh, Dr. Ammon's uh, latest book is um, uh, The Lucky Days, meaning yes. that, that, God forbid, if anyone gets sick, this is the time right. where things are, you're lucky in a way that there's so much technology out there that, 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 that we, can, we can really help you in ways we can never before. And, and, and the reason that we're so optimistic is that this is just the beginning. You know, we, ha we understand biomarkers from tears, from mucus, from saliva. We brush our teeth every day. We now have these sensors uh, that are a lot less crude than the last generation of sensors. We talked about wearables before, but now it's stickers. Uh, it won't be long before we're going to be able to get that human telemetry. And, and, and by understanding your DNA and how it changes over time, by understanding all these biomarkers, we'll be able to look back and reflect on, on today uh, with the disdain of medieval medicine, that notion of somebody getting in a hot box and driving to the doctor's <laughs> office so that they can ask them, when did this start bugging you? Uh, that will seem like uh, a silly way to begin. Uh, but for us, the, the, the thing that's really, really exciting is that that, that's in the future, uh, but already today some of these very capabilities can be applied with the things that we do understand. Uh, and it does require the right culture uh, in both our clients and in the hospital. You know, obviously it's individuals like yourself uh, that are opening up uh, uh, the minds of other uh, clinicians uh, and oncologists in your case uh, to try things a little bit differently, to be more empathetic, to bring a guitar in. And if they're willing to do all of that, then we think they'll, they'll also have fun with uh, some of these new capabilities. Yeah, yeah. The guitar's a good metaphor because it it's, it's about creating. Yeah. yeah, and you guys are <laughs> really master creators. And Click Labs is is blowing my mind away. Yeah. And and what? How big is your team now? Now there's uh, 13 full time dedicated to the lab. But our culture is very much based on incubation of both technology and tools we produce, and incubation of skills. So we have a um, tour of duty program where members from Click can work in the lab for three months or six months, learn. Um, learn from us and we learn from them and they go back to the team. So we're that center of uh, ID that incubates the rest of the company. I mean, talk about yeah. an, an, an agency yes. that is that you guys are, sci you guys are like um, scientists at the cutting edge of how we can communicate, how we can change the world, how we can change healthcare. It's like this incubation of transformation happening up in, in Toronto. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very much uh, in awe of what yeah. you guys are doing. Um, and I love the aspect that there's, there's this human. There's this, hu you guys, it seems like you always lead from your heart and that human aspect. That's what I connect with. That's what this show's about. The show, the show's about showcasing humans mm -hmm. that are making a difference for other humans yeah. at its raw, its most raw level. That's yeah. what we're doing here, and um, and that's a very hats important. off, hats off, literally, <laughs> hats off to you guys. <laughs> um, if I could look through this and get into Toronto, into the Click offices, I would do it every day because that yeah. is, I mean, that's that's just an, a hotbed of of discovery. Yeah. So um, I was going to say the, the human aspect is really important because medicine is entering that digital age and medicine has progressed at the speed of normal technology, so incremental a little bit every year and suddenly when some things become digital then you have Moore's law. It, it becomes better much, much quicker and we tend to lose track. We can't keep up. It just goes too fast. Like computers, computers become really fast before we know how to write good software for it. Yes. So we're trying to keep that human aspect, make sure we keep control of all this technology, that it's not technology driving the progress, but people knowing what to do with the technology. Yes, as, as, as Daniel, as you would say, exponential 
It's yeah. going at an exponential yeah. rate, well, right, and, Daniel? And the human mind, it, it struggles to comprehend the speed at which exponential change happens. Uh, and so if we can create the right guardrails on all of this uh, applied technology and connect the dots while keeping sight of uh, when each one of these technologies is perfectly timed, uh, we can help our team and our customers and in doing so be not just great stewards of their careers but also of the patient experience. Uh, we, we sort of try to think about it as the relentless pursuit of awesome. Uh, and <laughs> the that. idea is that awesome is the standard that doesn't stay still. So the second you've done something, it's no longer awesome. You got to do something different. Uh, and sometimes that experiment uh, it becomes a huge swing and a miss. And you got to have a culture that allows for that experimentation. And then once in a while, we come up with something that's truly awesome. And we know it's awesome because it makes people smile like you just did. I, I, I can't control the smile today. It's, it's great. Um, the last thing you said about experiment and, and that muse, going back to muse, to, to tie everything together, muse, as we call it, is an experiment. It started off as an experiment. Now, New York is March 31st, 2016. Is it still an experiment? Absolutely. We are always in beta. We're <laughs> always experimenting. We're always trying uh, new things, different things. Uh, uh, and uh, every single thing about us as an organization uh, is in the spirit of that. Uh, and that's what creates the safe environment for pe people to be fearless and try new things and make mistakes from time to time. Uh, but most of the time, uh, we're pretty happy with the results. Yeah, and if you want to uh, attend Muse in New York, March 31st, 2016, go to click.com forward slash Muse. Get those applications in right away because there's a waiting list, I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the best events you could ever attend. I want to thank you guys for coming today. Lee Ramanyan from Click Health. You guys uh, knocked it out of the park. Thank you for giving us all of these wonderful technologies and for making a huge difference out there in healthcare, digital healthcare, pharma, biotech, medical devices. Click Health, thank you for being here, and I look forward to uh, having you back on the show another time, for sure. Thank, thank you for welcome. having us, and we look forward to it. And yes. everybody out there, I want to see you all next week when we come back for The Dr. Stevens Show. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you soon. It's the site where understanding investing starts to click. Click on WealthEd.com, educating you about financial planning and answering your most important questions with live interactive shows hosted by experienced financial strategists and an on-demand library of videos and articles you can access anytime for free. WealthEd.com brings you retirement planning guidance, social security strategies, tax management techniques, portfolio allocation options, and more. Your source for information and financial education. Online, on demand, on WealthEd.com.